Let it become our life. And let it begin to work. Let it begin to work in us. It'll work, beloved. It'll change us into his image. That's the purpose that he wants for us to be. He don't want us to go around with a, a long, long face. Like the mule you see on when they show these advertising about Democrats and Republicans, you know, and they got this mule over there with a long face. God wants the people that are rejoicing in him. Yeah. We have hope that goes beyond anything that comes our way. Right. We have a purpose. We know we're going to the other side. Yeah, right. And it's not going to be because of us. It's because of him. Right. So our trust is in him, right? Yeah. So why should it be any different than these little old things we go through, these little old trials? What if he took everything away from us? Who gave it to us in the first place? That's why we can say the same thing. Listen, we don't have to be over in them foreign lands to no. have to go through trials. No, sir. No, sir. We could be in a land of plenty and still have plenty of trials. Exactly right. Because God could dry it up like, a, like taking water out of a turnip. Mm -hmm. Where there ain't nothing that ain't worth eating after that. Mm -hmm. That's what God can do, but it's not to destroy us. Right. He wants to make us stronger. The song, one of the courses that we sang this morning, You Are My What? When all else what? Do we have to wait till all else fails us before we can reckon on him to be our strength? Do we all have to, you are my peace through days of strife. Do we have to get to the point to where we're completely bombarded with strife in our hearts to wait for him to be our peace? He's our peace whether we have in strife or not. He's our hope when doubt surrounds us. And when doubt ain't surrounding us, he's still our hope. He is our life, beloved. He's our life. Let's put our hope in him. It says, whether thou would keep his commandments or not. That's the whole purpose. The Lord gave us his word that we might live by it. Yes. It's not just word to put in our pea brain here, but it's something that can be, it says over and I believe it's, uh, oh God, I believe it's in Ephesians 6. It talks about the word. It's, his word is living. Yes. It's active. It's not sitting there dormant. It's accomplishing something in our hearts. And he humbled thee. Praise God, we need to get away from this whole stinking pride we got anyways. Yes. To realize we don't even know how, like Solomon said, we don't, have, we don't know how to go out or how to come in. Right. Fact is, is that's, that's the case. We do lean too much on this armor of flesh. Yes, but he humbled us, suffered he to hunger. Let me say this to you. The trials we're going through now. Do you think it might be possible that God's allowing that to humble us? Do you think it might be possible that he's suffering us to hunger? Do you think it might be possible that he wants to feed us with some manna, some manna that's got life in it, Amen. besides the bread that we eat and necessarily at our table? You see the comparison? He's doing the same thing with us that he did with them people back there. We're in, just because we're in a different age don't mean God stopped working. His ways are still the same ways. He still intends on working with his people. And if he takes us on and brings forth another generation, he's going to work in them too. God's faithful. Yes, he he's not dependent on you and me, beloved. We're dependent on him. Right. Said, and he humbled thee and, and suffered thee to hunger, fed us with manna which thou knewest not, and neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know, that he might destroy you, that he might show that you're paupers and you're... You need to be below. You're worse than a worm. Is that what it is? No, I ain't God's attitude towards us. He's Listen, he gave his only son for us. He loves his people. Yes. He loves you and me. Yes, and every brother that we have and every sister we have in this world. His purpose is that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. We don't need to learn lean to the arm of flesh. We can trust in him. One of my favorite scriptures, and I'll say, I'll quote it, is blessed is a man. Blessed, we're blessed. Yes. Well, how are we blessed, Lord? By putting our trust in him. Yes. Yes. By putting our hope in him. Right. Oh, my God. What else? There's got to be something else. No. Mm -hmm. Just simply trusting him. Right. Putting our hope in him. We're blessed. Amen. We are blessed today whether we put our trust and our hope in him anyways because he's teaching us how to put our trust in him. Yes. We're still blessed. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And then over in Hebrews 11, Jimmy, Jimmy was quoting the scriptures. I, I figured he'd probably quote them all. I wouldn't even have to get up. But he did. Uh, 
He did miss a couple of them, sir. <laughs> I appreciate everything that's been said, too. I don't want to give the enemy no room to work on nobody about nothing that's been said. We need to pray. Yes, yes. It's, listen, some things are, are absolute basic. When a child is born, what does one of the things he's got to do? He's got to drink milk, doesn't he? Well, drinking milk is just like praying. It's, got, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. How, how are we ever going to know who he is if we don't communicate with him? Where can you go? Where can you go? I know you can't go to no psychiatrist and lay on that bed and start unloading yourself to him, and he's going to help you. But his word says we can go to him and cast all of our cares upon him. Amen. Why? Because he cares for us. Yes, we can take all these heavy burdens we got, we can dump them off at his feet and say, Lord, they're yours. And take his yoke on us because his burden is easy. Yeah. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Right. We got a different yoke on, beloved, if it's weighing us down, yeah. if it's causing us to be discouraged, yeah. if it's causing us to be defeated, oh, if it's making us doubt and fear, whether we, we're going to be able to make it to the next meal, we're going to be able to pay the next. We got, our, we got the wrong yoke on. That's right. mm-hmm. His word don't tell me that his yoke is like that. No, sir. So we need to take it off. Throw it down. Amen. Tell the devil he's a liar. Amen. That's right. It's not God's yoke. No. And let the Lord put his yoke on us. Right. Blessed is a man that puts his trust in the Lord and put, whose hope the Lord is. Right. Says He says another thing. He'll keep us in what? Perfect peace. Oh, what is perfect peace? That means you're not doubting. You're not fearing. Who's what? We're looking to him. That's what he wants. Listen, we, he, don't need to, we, he don't need to ask us about how to get through the wilderness. He, don't need, he knows the way. We just need to follow him. He's going to take us to the other side. Listen, he will never get off his throne. And everything that he allows the devil to do, he's doing it for our good. It never will be anything out of, our hand, out of his hands. Hebrews 11, verse 6. This is our problem. This is our need, beloved. But without faith. What is faith? It's things hoped for. It's something we don't have. Isn't that right? But it's something that we believe that we're going to have. That we believe we're going to have. Just like you said there Wednesday night. That's a real truth. I believe that we need to get off the diaper and get off the milk and start having a little bit of bread. Get a little bit of some vegetables. Start eating them instead of get this milk. This milk, we need to grow up. And I'm talking to myself. We need to try. Listen, we need to prove God. Take him at his word. Dare to stand and defy the devil and tell him that he, I don't care what we see. God's going to work it out for good. Because that's what his word says. Isn't that right? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Let me ask you a question. If we really, and I know the path of the justice is shining light, but I want to make a point. The point is we need to exercise ourselves, beloved. Mm -hmm. We just need to walk out by faith. There to take God at his word. It says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Let me ask you this. Do we believe that when we go to him in prayer that he's going to answer that prayer? If we don't believe, then we're wasting our breath. Do you know that? Thank God. There's a scripture over in, uh, hold that right there a second. There's a scripture over in, uh, oh God, I think it is uh, uh, Romans 8. Let's see here a second. Just stay right where you're at. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray. Did you know that? That's right. Because all we're praying for is, Lord, take this problem away from me. And the Lord's saying, hey, this problem is serving as a purpose to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish in you. It says, We know not what we should pray for as we ought. But thank God, this is what Christ does for us. The Spirit in itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Thank God he goes before the throne and he don't say, he he says, Lord, be patient. 
Be patient with them, Lord. Go ahead and accomplish what you're doing. They'll understand, in, in the, they'll understand by and by. They'll understand. So he don't take those things away from us, even though we want them to be taken. Paul wanted that thorn in the flesh. Here is an apostle. Look at Jesus Christ when he was in the garden. He had flesh just like me and you. This is a son of God. And yet he prayed because he had this flesh. He asked, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. We, he had the same flesh we had. Why do you think he cannot be like a high priest that he became in touch with the things of our infirmity? He went and suffered in all points like as we are. He wanted to be able to understand what you and I go through. That he might go before the Father and say, Lord, help him. He needs you right now. He's in a low place. Minister faith to him. Minister strength. Give your word to him, Lord. Give him hope. That will lift him up and, and, and get his eyes on you to know that you're his help. That's, right. That's what he does to us, beloved. Amen. He intercedes more than we dare realize. Amen. My God, he stays before the Father, entreating not just for me and you, but for our brethren around this world. I don't care what they're going through. They can be threatened. They can be threatened. All they want to be threatened. All it does is turn the hearts of his people toward him. That's, right. That's what we need. That's what he's wanting the whole time. Yes. Yes. We're learning. Don't be discouraged. We're learning. God's helping us, beloved. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. We got to believe him, beloved. We got to take him at his word. That's, right. That's what he gave us. This is our hope. Listen, this is his covenant that he gave us. We can make our requests based upon his word, his promises. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'd say that word diligently is something that we do with our whole heart. And then as we do that, I'm telling you, he'll answer us. And even if we don't have faith, beloved, we just begin where we're at and ask him to help our unbelief. God's with us, beloved. He's going to bring us through these things. And I'm telling you, there's going to be some more severe trials ahead of us. That's what he's doing. He's trying to strengthen us. Get us to where we learn to lean on him. <laughs> He's going to take us through these things. Fact is, is we can't fight them in the first place. I don't know why we, we, we get to that point because we, we, can't, we can't overcome without him. He is our victory. He's our strength. He's our peace. He's our rest. Oh, God, look at the fruit of the Spirit there. That's what Christ is to us. He's our salvation. He's our wisdom. He's our righteousness. He's our redemption, and He's our salvation. Oh, God, Amen. let's just rest in Him, beloved. There's no, listen, with Him there is rest. We, can, we, can, we don't have to struggle. We don't have to strive. Just put it in His hands. Say, Lord, this is your problem because this, this, ain't, this ain't my situation. This is you. I'm trusting you with it. Take care of me, Lord. And He's faithful. He'll bring us through. Amen.